Hi guys, and welcome to episode 44 of the Crochet Cakes podcast. This is a general crafting podcast, but it's mostly crochet, sometimes knitting, sometimes sewing. You can find me as Crochet Cakes on Instagram, Elo Ravelry, here on YouTube, and you can search for my Etsy shop as Dainty by crochetcakes.etsy.com. All the links will be in the down bar below. And you can follow the Ravel join the Ravelry group for the Crochet Cakes podcast. Just search Crochet Cakes podcast in the groups tab on Ravelry. I do not have a blog, and there is no official email for this podcast yet. So if you just want to get in touch with me, you can write comment here on YouTube, you can private message me on Instagram, private message me on Ravelry, or just search for me and talk to me. I do not bite. Right. Before we move on to any of the crafting content of this podcast, I first want to take a moment to just say a huge, huge, huge Thank you to everybody that commented on my previous video. It was episode 43 and entitled Let's Get Real. You guys made my day, my week, practically my month because it's been such a long while since I podcasted last. I believe it's been three weeks. But I really wanted to take the opportunity to thank all of you. I did comment to everybody whose comments popped up on the feed. Sometimes I have issues where comments will appear on my notifications, but when I search for them to actually reply, they don't appear on the video feed. So I don't know what that's about, but if I didn't get to your comment, it's just that it didn't appear for me. But anyway, just, I was so moved, you guys. I'm always just so amazed at how much kindness is out there and how really all of us feel the same thing. We're all on the same page. You know, maybe we felt that way before, maybe we just felt like we're in a dark abyss before, but the important thing is, like you guys all said, is to, is to keep moving forward. We're all in dark places, we're all going through various different things, and we all need to be there and support each other because this is a great community and it's full of wonderful people. And if we all support each other and pass on the love, then the world would be better for it in my opinion. And as a thank you for all the love, positive, positivity, and just beautiful energy you guys sent my way, I've been working on two things. One of them will be in the one of my Hooktown segment, but the other one, I haven't really been working on it, but I did want to share with you. And it's a poem. It's a poem that really speaks to me, and I'm sure a lot of you have heard it if you've probably ever gone to a high school graduation or a middle, you know, any sort of graduation. But it's a poem that has always just consoled me, it's energized me, it's beautiful. And it's a poem by William Ernst Henley, and it's titled Invictus. Now, it's been ages since I've read poetry out loud, so please bear with me if it's not that great. But I hope I get the message across. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. So yes, um, it's, like I said, Invictus by William Ernest Henley. And um, I just... I love the poem. Um, first of all, unconquerable soul. How amazing is that imagery? And I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. I think, I think we often forget that, don't we? 
when with all the pressures that we put on ourselves and all the lists and upon lists of things that we have to get done because it, they, we just have to do them. You push yourself and you push yourself. And I think we often lose sight of that, that we control our fate. We are who we are. And we need to know who we are in order to better act in this world. I think it's a brilliant poem. And it just really speaks to me. There are a bunch of other poems as well that speak to me, but this one is from the Victorian era and I thought it was apt for what we were all to, <clears throat> pardon me, <laughs> what we were all discussing in the previous video of moving forward. Because it's important that we, no matter what we feel, we keep moving forward. We keep with that momentum. And so I just want to thank you guys by sharing with you that poem, which has also inspired some items for the shop that I have yet to make. They're here. I just haven't, you know, made them. <sighs> right. <laughs> Shall we move on to some crafting news? I hope you've all been well and that you've been crafting to your heart's content. I haven't really been crafting a lot. I have to say, I've been sewing a lot for my shop. I think I've sold a total of 60 items <laughs> for my shop, you know, since I first opened. Not, okay, not 60. We're like 35. Um, I've sewn 35 items for my shop already, you know, between the first update, the second update, which was two weeks ago. There's still some items left in the shop, if I'm not mistaken. Um, some notions pouches. And apart from all that sewing, I've started a part-time job. So it's been a bit wonky adjusting to that. But more on that later. Shop update will be later on in the episode as well. What I really should get to is the crafting news. So I don't know if you guys know, but Claudia has started a podcast in Spanish. So any Spanish-speaking people in this podcast, if you're interested in hearing a Spanish podcast, because <laughs> they are very rare, I find. I did try to search for a Spanish podcast because I really feel guilty that everything I do is in English. Spanish is my native language, and it's a beautiful, descriptive, soulful language, and I don't use it as much as I should, at least crafting-wise. And I've been meaning to remedy that. And I do mean to start a Spanish podcast sometime in the near future because it's already May. I can't even believe that. It's already May. Mother's Day weekend is next week. Well, this, this Sunday is Mother's Day weekend. And May the 4th already passed. It's, it's just crazy how time flies, isn't it? Anyway, back to the Spanish part of this podcast. I've been really berating myself, you know, speaking of putting pressure on ourselves, I've been really berating myself about not um, following patterns in Spanish or Spanish podcasts and that type of thing. And while I've been meaning to start my Spanish podcast, it's not um, something that you can do without following Spanish designer, Spanish speaking designers and, you know, catching up on the Spanish-speaking community and what their interests are. So one of the first things I decided to do was search for patterns in Spanish. And I've been following um, Susi Mew on Instagram, I'll put the link below as well, for a long while now. I think my water is boiling for the tea, I'll be right back. Right, I've put a timer on for my tea, so if you hear beep, that uh, means my tea is ready for consumption should be ready in about eight minutes. So as I was saying, I've been following Susi Mew on Instagram almost since I opened my Instagram account because I just love the projects she crochets. They're usually rugs, big, gorgeous rugs, and I love them. And she's got a couple of patterns in her blog that are free, but she was also participating in 
in this publication of patterns that basically is the Spanish equivalent to what uh, was done in the US for a little while ago, 42 patterns, um, 29.90 euros, I think it was. And they've got knitting, crochet, they've got a lovely variety of patterns. I believe there's maybe two days left for this. I could be mistaken because I saw it last week and I was meaning to podcast last week to let you guys know about this publication, but time just got away from me. So I am now just podcasting on Monday, the 7th of May. So I hope there's still two days left for the for you to get the publication. Uh, I got it and I was browsing through some of them. Of course, there's one crochet garment pattern that I would love to make. There's also a knitting one, which I thought was crochet when I first looked at it, but it's just, it's garter stitch, so. But it's beautiful, it's the v-neck in the back and kind of reminded me of something I'm designing, actually, or I'm trying to design. So that was my venture, you know, first steps into Spanish publications for crochet and knitting. Very excited. I haven't finished browsing through all the patterns yet, but I know just from looking at the pictures, there's this really cute crochet bag and it's like a, it's a bear. It's a crochet bear and it's gorgeous. I want to make it. It's just a big bag and then she kind of put the face of the bear in the bag. There's lots of amigurumi if you're into that type of thing. And it was just a beautiful opportunity and I did not pass it up. Which brings me up to my first sort of maybe finished object of this episode. And I'm calling it a sort of maybe finished object, so a nine and three quarters finished object because there's still some things I want to add and or change from the project. So I was mentioning Laura from Susi Mew and she had this beautiful, um, in Spanish it's called Neceser, but it's basically like a clutch or pencil case. And it was crocheted, the original one, you know, she crocheted it using the yarn that she sells in her store. It's an online store that um, sells t-shirt yarns, cotton yarn, cotton air yarns. Mm, linen yarns and extra large merino wool for our knitting and she's also got some extra large cotton for arm knitting which is a cotton fiber filled uh, I think it's polyfill so you get the huge merino effect but it's a bit cooler I should say Anyway, so she had this pattern and I really just loved this design at the top. So I went to her blog and I checked it out and don't be afraid, it's a chart. So even if you don't speak Spanish and you like this, you can make it because it's all in a chart. There's basically no written instructions for it. And as you can see, I've woven in some of the ends, but some of them are just hanging out. They haven't been woven in. Now, since I want to use this as a clutch, this is just too flimsy. Even though I did use a 3.75 hook with this cotton, 24-7 cotton from Lion Brown. This is a crew, or you know, crudo. And it's what I used for this little triangle bits. And the main body is done in the jade color which I think is beautiful and I need a garment in this color but as you can see I used basically at least 75% of the ball I would say more than 50% but there's I should have weighed this for you guys this I just used a tiny bit I basically still have the whole ball left and Sorry guys, I uh, I 
I had this in the bag with the um, clutch and I had dropped almost all the stitches from the DPN. This is just a dishcloth. Um, I have no idea how many stitches I cast on, but it's just a washcloth that my boyfriend, my fiance, wanted me to make him. This is Knit Pig Stitchy in a color whose ball band I've lost. I'm the worst, is aren't I? I'm just the worst giving explanations this week. But yes, uh, what I wanted to do, because I wanted to be a really sturdy clutch, is I wanted to line the bag. But that wasn't going to provide enough sturdiness, so I thought that I could line pieces of cardboard and then put them inside the bag to make it have some sturdiness and you know I can actually use it then as a clutch you know put it here because right now it's just not that useful as a clutch if you ask me and I do need to line it anyways because even though I used a 3.75 hook like I said it's the holes are very gapy I don't know I think my gauge has loosened up a lot which actually really bugs me right so in terms of nine and three quarters finished object, that is really it. I haven't finished my granny stripe blanket. It's it's going. I picked it up yesterday for the first time in three weeks, but there's not a lot left because I'm running out of yarn. And when I run out of yarn, that's gonna be it. I'm not adding any more to it in the foreseeable future. That's my tea. And I'm back with tea. Because I've just had some really horrible allergies and the only thing keeping them at bay right now is tea. Copious amounts of tea. Um, in case you're interested, this is a mug that was sent to me by Claudia. I find it fascinating that Claudia, Mom, and I could just basically be mug... Three C's? <laughs> yeah, that makes no sense. But you get what I mean. Both of, uh, like... Our names all start with C, so we can all have, be like the sisterhood of the traveling pants, but with a mug. <laughs> right. So the, she also sent me some vision tea, which is what I'm drinking right now, which is a big change from what I've usually been drinking. I've been drinking copious amounts of jasmine green tea. It's beautiful. It's lovely, subtle, and just delicious. Right, that's been steeping for eight minutes and it's still boiling. I don't know. I don't understand. Anyway. I already told you about the clutch. And my current track of trying to work patterns in English and Spanish. So. I was talking to you about um, projects that I still have on the go that I haven't worked on. <laughs> which is the crochet granny stripe blanket, but like I said, it's almost finished, and the spicier life blanket, which every time I look at that huge gorgeous bag of yarn, I want to work on it. But I want to finish one blanket before I actually continue working on the other one. And my fiance's socks, which have been neglected for a month. I think this is why I take so long knitting socks. It's not only that I'm a slow knitter, it's that I'm a forgetful knitter and I just leave things and don't work on them for ages. Like, I don't know if you remember, but I do have a pair of socks that have been on the go for almost a year and I promised them to my sister for her birthday last year and that didn't happen. Yeah, I haven't yet made the second sock, which is really sad because I've got one completed sock. I should really just cast on the other sock. And really, I love casting on socks. It's just working on them that's the problem. I don't know why. I'll cast them all on if I can. But working on them? I'm a bit iffy on that still. Great. Let's stop drinking copious amounts of tea and get on with the podcasting business. So since my nine and three quarters finished object is crochet, I think I'm also going to move on to what am I hooked on, which is the 
crochet segment of this podcast and I'm currently hooked on una cosa, one thing. It is, and it is, something that you saw if you follow me on Instagram, but it's gone through so many changes since I posted a picture on Instagram, but you'll still be able to recognize it. And I actually finished the front of it last night. Why is there just a front of it? Because it's a garment. Oh yeah. Can you guys see? So I'm gonna explain to you about this construction and this is kind of my way of saying thank you to you guys because I'm working on this being a, a free pattern that I want to share with you guys for just all the support and because we're almost at my second pot of bursary, which of course requires some very special content that I have yet to plan. But I just wanted to put it out there that we're almost at my second pot of bursary. So as part of that, I'm designing a pattern to celebrate. And it's gone through a lot of mutations because at first I wanted it to be in the round, but I just couldn't figure out a way to make a V-neck in the round without Okay, let me start again. I couldn't figure out a way to work in the round whilst leaving a space for my armhole for a sleep cap. I did not want to have the yoke and the um the yoke be forming the armholes, you know, just raglan increases and there's I didn't want that. So then I decided I wanted a v-neck because I wanted to use a bulky yarn and this is what I used. I found this in Michael's and <laughs> I was so thrilled because it's basically like t-shirt yarn. So this is, um, the color is clay, it's bulky so it recommends an 8mm hook or knitting needle. 72% cotton, 28% nylon. So it's beautiful for summer projects and for house projects and just, I think it's beautiful for everything. Rugs, maybe not blank. I don't know if I would make a blanket in it, but definitely a rug and I'm making a garment. Mm. But I would also use it to make a bag, you know, like a tote bag or a beach bag. I just love working with this yarn. It's got elasticity to it. Oh, I love it. Which, of course, if you are going to use it to crochet a bag, would require um, you to have really tight tension. So you would have to use a smaller crochet hook. Um, for example, this I used with a seven millimeter crochet hook, but I'm pretty sure I could have probably gone down to a five if you really want to have it be um, tight and not see-through. And this lovely pattern, I crocheted it using an eight millimeter hook. Now, I started, because originally what I was going to do, front and back, seam it at the sides, and then work in the round for the bottom part. But that reminded me too much of the peplum top construction. So I decided to go against it. I'm like, why do I just want to do the bottom part in the round when I actually like doing all of it in the round? My issue usually comes that I like sleep caps other than just built-in sleeves. So I just decided to work it flat. But I had already done from here to here, worked flat. And I started working on this side. Then I didn't want to cut my yarn in case I didn't like the design. So I slip stitched down to the middle. So when I actually finish the blouse, I'm gonna slip stitch here too as well to make it all even. So we've got a v-stitch and I actually started the blouse with 45 stitches and then I did increases to 47 stitches because I was going to, so after I'd finished this I just attached my yarn here. I attached my yarn here and I did two rows of increases to get to 47 stitches because I wanted to make 
this um, must be over here. Of course, now I can't find it. Excuse me a second, guys. You know how it is. You know where everything is until you try to find it and then you just can't because life works. Aha! Here it is. So it's in the Vogue Dictionary of Crochet Stitches, which I really like. I wanted to use this, which kind of looks like the arcade stitch, but not. It's got spaces between, unlike the arcade stitch, so I wanted to do this. The problem with it was that it was tucking the stitches in a lot, even though I was using a 8mm crochet hook for them. So I ripped it all back, and I decided to do a 9mm hook. It was still tucking it in, it was it looked like a really small waist. So, I ripped it all back again and I started using a 10mm crochet hook and whilst that gave me a really beautiful, delicate, lacy, flowy waist, it also made the stitch very distorted. The stitch um, with the yarn, I couldn't handle a 10mm hook with such a lacy stitch. It didn't have enough structure, it was too flowy. So, I moved, you know, then I tried this one which is basically all single crochets. I kept having clumps of single crochets together on one side and the other side being lacy. That drove me insane. Then I tried, <laughs> I tried multiple stitches until I finally settled on one that was just like, oh, and it's this one. I really, really like this stitch. And the effect is essentially like a granny square, except you don't need to join. See? Now, the problem with this is that it's a vintage pattern. The stitches are very confusing. Well, not the stitches, the instructions are very con confusing because they assume a lot. For example, the first stitch, it always ha have you chain five. And then it tells you skip the first stitch. Go into the next stitch. Okay but it skips the fact that you need to have that your chain five counts as one double crochet plus a chain two. So you would always have these chain two spaces. And at the beginning, I didn't quite catch that. And you can tell here. I left that mistake on purpose to show you guys because it also tells you to just crochet on the top of the chain. You can't do that. Because this is what I did here before I realized that my chain five counts as a double crochet in a chain two space. So you would essentially um, make your last stitch in the third chain from the hook to give you that chain two space. So I've rewritten all the instructions out to what I think are clear instructions and they'll be included with the pattern, of course. I'm also planning on doing filming a video tutorial later on today because I started the second part of it. This is all, by the way, one ball of yarn. Yeah. So I'm on the, still the first ball of yarn. I haven't touched my second. So I've already done one pattern repeat here. It's, it's a six row pattern repeat. And yeah, I've already done one pattern repeat here. So I've left it off to do the second pattern repeat on a video so I can show you guys how it's going to be looking. Now, the other thing is that you'll probably notice, since I attached the yarn, I essentially started crocheting this uh, from the bottom, you know, down. Uh, the other side, I just realized that I could definitely start at the bottom and then work up, because I want the front and the back to be the same uh, in terms of v-neck i'm pretty sure i want both pieces to have a v-neck i'm just trying to decide if i want the v-neck to be smaller or longer in the back so if i want to just have a little kind of pop v-neck like that or if i want to have a very deep v-neck i'm still deciding that um so the 
thing about it here also is that I had to increase to 51 stitches. And I just did that fudging it while working in the pattern, really. Because here, I started with 51 stitches. But they both look the same. And I'm in love with it because, honestly, it's like a granny square without the joining. And it's beautiful. I am in love with this stitch. I'm so happy I finally chose it. And I'm in love with working with the yarn. Like I said, I'm using, I used a seven millimeter for the breast area and this is an eight millimeter. It's two pattern repeats and just can you guys kind of see, it's going to be reaching here, right here. So right below the waist where your jean, jean band should be. Um, really thrilled with this. I'm just trying to write very specific instructions because for this, I just made it. I didn't write any instructions. I just started, like I said, yarn doodling. And this is what the final product looks like. I'm really happy. I'm keeping it all in a basket. It's not even in a project bag because I don't have a project bag big enough to hold such a huge ball of yarn. I mean, skein of yarn. That's a skein of yarn. Oh, and I love using this crochet hook. It's a Deborah Norville 8mm crochet hook, I believe. It's been ages since I used it, and it just reminds me how much I love wooden crochet hooks. So that is it for the What Am I Hooked On segment, and I haven't really thought of anything I want to hook. So there is no hook it segment either. I mean, there's tons of things that I've got planned, but I just, off the top of my head, I can't remember them now. Right, my tea's getting cold, so I'm gonna take a break, finish drinking my tea, and then come back to you with what I've been knitting. Right, I'm back. Um, I didn't really finish my entire tea. I have this thing where I hate drinking the bottom of tea. I don't know what it is. Am I the only one who does that? I don't think so, right? There are other people who don't like drinking the end of anything, right? Anyway, I promised you. Knitting. Right, so what I've actually been knitting on is something that I had started for the different designer cowl, and by that I literally mean I had cast it on. Um, and it's the Angel Face Turban by Poison Girls. It's okay if I show you this because it just has the description and the materials you'll need. It doesn't have any instructions. Right, so that's what I was trying to do. But I kept having issues with the rib. My rib was just not looking like a rib. Apparently, I can't do rib in flat. I've looked at 10 videos and I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Uh, it's okay, I got it now. Keep doing it. And the only thing you have to do is stack your knits and your pearls. But it just wasn't working. I don't know. I don't know what it was. So ultimately, I just did a shorter rib and I left it at that. It doesn't even look like a rib. But I really wanted to move forward. So this is the lacy bits of it and there are so many mistakes i can't even like describe to you how many mistakes this has uh some areas have five stitches in between instead of four some of them have five six, six instead of five it's ridiculous but i'm just moving forward with it because i've got the correct number of stitches you're supposed to end up with so so that's me moving forward with this. Yeah. So I'm um, just really happy. She gives you a stitch count. Um, she does say that between stitch markers you should have 68, 4 in the middle, and then 68 at the end. Uh, I counted and I've been consistently having 68, 64s. So 
I'm not too worried about that. I'm gonna count it again because for some reason I think I didn't do a decrease and I've actually got 69 on either side, but I'm gonna count it again. And if I do, I'll just decrease it. <sighs> this has been the most difficult project, knitting project I've worked on. Socks, socks are easy. Um, garments, my garment was pretty easy, the one I made. This, it's really, I'm having a really hard time with it. And I think it's because it's fingering weight and there is 144 stitches. And that's the most stitches I've ever worked with in fingering weight. At least it's right now on 3.25 millimeter needles. So I'm using my Leica needles, which I adore. Before it was on Knit Picks 2.75. And these were actually really good. Like the other Knit Picks needles that I have, the nine inch circular ones, I hate them. But I really like these. Um, they're pointy enough for me. The other ones had chipped points and they're sleek and the cable's nice. So I'm okay with them as well. Actually, Knitter's Pride, not Knit Picks. My bad, Knitter's Pride. I just, I do have some Knit Picks though. So yeah, that's what I'm working on. And I also have got some DPNs in this bag because at some point you'll be required to do in the round. And I don't think I'm prepared to do magic loop in the round if I've only got to stitch it. <laughs> I'm a mess. So I've got my trusty DPNs for in the round. And you need them anyway because you do a three needle bind off. So yeah, I actually think I might have a 16 inch cable in the round. I think, not sure. So yeah, my thoughts on this. Apparently I can't knit a rib flat. Um, but other than that, I've really been liking the project in this long. And the lace, it's supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be one, two, one, two, one, two. So as long as I keep my ones on top of my ones and my twos on top of my twos, I'm not worried. But actually, since I'm treating it like such a nonchalant thing of, oh, I made a mistake. Oh well, I'm loving it. I'm really enjoying the process of knitting it. And since it's a, I believe it's a 10 row repeat. I'm sorry, it's a 12 row repeat. And since it's a 12 row repeat, it's, it's beautiful. Because <laughs> you're entertained throughout the whole of it. And it's been living in this gorgeous fox bag that mom sewed for me. In terms of crafty content that I've done, that's it. Um, I do have some acquisitions, not because, well, some of them I bought. Like I bought that Bernat uh, yarn, as you saw in Michael's and I've also bought in Michael's this yarn from Red Heart. It's a wrap, so it's a gradient. It's a gradient cake. This one's called Western Occidental. It's super fine, so it's kind of like, it's lace weight, essentially. I recommend two point, a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook in, or a 2.75 knitting needle. And this is 50% cotton, 50% acrylic. So it's basically our Red Hearts version of Hippies, Sheepjees, whatever it's called. And it's lovely. I can't wait to work with it. I've been actually debating if I want to do another Spotting Clouds top with it because it has 200 grams, 7 ounces, 1,100 yards. Or if I want to design my own tunic to go with it. You know, after this, I think maybe I just want to do something someone else's design. So maybe I'll do another spotting clouds top because 
I gave uh, the one I made to my sister. But this time I'll do it with mom's changes. So decreasing at the waist and stuff like that. The other acquisitions I've got, some of them were beautiful gifts. Wanna see? Um, from mom and Claudia. Claudia, who is Crochet Luna, and she's got a podcast, I'm sure all of you know this. She sent me the most beautiful package, and she also, in the package, was this beautiful mug. Tea got cold. Um, some really cute wall decorations. Her pins, which are gorgeous. I love them. I love these pens. I haven't put them anywhere because I'm trying to decide what bag to put them on. This just blew my mind. I mean, Claudia, you really shouldn't have. This, this just blew my mind. I think I'm gonna try and make the, I had, you remember I had bought some yarn at Edinburgh to make the dragon shawl, I think I'm going to try it instead, making it with this gradient. I think it'll be beautiful. She sent me these gorgeous stickers. A really cute patchwork book that I, for some reason, don't have with me here. It must be in the kitchen. <laughs> don't ask. And a gorgeous hand Claudia bag. I'm calling it my Claudia bag. So I think I'm going to put the crochet Luna pin on this bag. And I would just love to know what interfacing you use because it's lovely and squishy, but not too squishy. So I, it must be a very thin batting, I think. It's got a lovely big handle with interfaced as well. And it's also got, it's a drawstring bag and it's got a little progress keeper. Look at that. Oh, it's just beautiful. I love it. I absolutely love it. The gifts that I received from mom. She spoiled me. So I've got Edinburgh from Wool and Vine. And this is in my favorite base, which is her footsie base, BFL nylon. This one's the Ramus Lupin colorway, which is from Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. It's a 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon high twist yarn. It's got 365 meters. Oh, so yeah, they're basically, I think these are the same base actually. They're both high twist. That's why I love them for crochet. I just love high twist. And she also got me a uh, Nora George toffee apple. I love this colorway. It's in DK, so it's 100% super wash merino. I don't know what I'm going to make with it yet, but I think I'm going to pair it with other DK yarns that I have that go really well. And maybe I'll make myself a gradient jumper or something like that. I have three skeins that match, so maybe that'll be enough to make myself a gradient jumper. So excited. And in terms of acquisitions, that's really it. I've been very good. I've been trying to save my pennies and not buy a lot of yarn because I have a lot of it and ever since I opened the Etsy shop, it's been harder to work with yarn. I have bought a lot of fabric, but yeah. I really can't wait to get through all my yarn stash, not because I don't want to have a yarn stash, but because I love all the yarns in there and I want to make stuff with them. I think possibly most of them are going to be garments, even though it's wool and I don't really need wool garments, but a girl can dream, can't she? Right, so I'm just gonna move on to basically the let's get real segment, which is just the segment where I chat about what's been going on in my life and 
any other thing that doesn't have to do with craftiness. <laughs> so if you are only here for the crafting component of the podcast, then thank you so much for watching. And after the Let's Get Real segment, I'm going to have a bit of a shop talk. So if you want to fast forward to that, you can. I'll put the timestamps. Yeah. Um, I've been good, guys. I have to say I've been really good. Mom visited just for a couple of days, which my fiance and I were both disappointed about because, well, him especially because, well, me especially, but he was also disappointed because he actually had to work about 60 hours that week. So yeah, we barely saw him. But mommy came. And it was just wonderful. We had a great time. We did some crafting together. I got to see her felt, which I love. I love watching mom felt. It's it's really fun. We watched some podcasts together. We went to Michael's, went to Joanne's. Um, we didn't get any further than the Palm Bay area, which is where I am, just because we were doing so much shopping at Michael's and Joanne's and you know, not at shopping, shopping, some virtual shopping as well, you know, just look, but don't buy, that type of thing. And I think it was just the boost I needed to really get fully out of my funk. It was great having her here and I miss her, you know, I, I, I miss her and it really, having mom visit kind of really struck me that I am not in Florida for vacation. I actually live here now. And that was kind of a double-edged sword because it was like, oh, right, I don't live at home anymore. But home is still home, you know? Home is where the heart is. And while my heart is also here with my fiancé, it's also at home. <laughs> if that makes any sense. But I've been good. And so thank you guys for all your support. I've just been baking lots of bread. It's the peasant bread from alexandracooks.com. If you haven't tried it, uh, you should and you shouldn't. You should because it's delicious and you shouldn't because it's highly addicting. Right now, it's almost the only bread my fiance will eat. I try to make it once a week, so, you know, we don't consume copious amounts of bread. To me, uh, today I made a apple blueberry cobbler for breakfast, which I thought was great. I'm getting good at, again, at making these fast, baking breakfasts the same day. <sighs> I don't know what it is, but I do love berry cobblers or crumbles for breakfast. I just think they're so great. Do you? Do you guys think that as well? No. I've also, like I said, been drinking copious amounts of jasmine tea. I bought it off Amazon. It's the one that comes in a metal tin, so feel free to order it. It's delicious. I love it. And it's green tea, so it's slight caffeinated. It's not super caffeine like chai, which is still my favorite tea, but I just really don't want to get addicted to it, so I drink it sparingly. Also, for some reason, bought Ovaltine. Yeah. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that we are preparing to become fur parents. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Part of me really wants all the puppies in the world to have homes, but the other part of me knows the huge responsibility having a puppy is. It's like having a child. You know, you except he'll never learn how to speak, so you have to kind of guess what he wants from you. But yesterday we spent the day kind of prepping our apartment to be puppy ready. We hid all our cables, we've organized everything. None of my yarn is out and about. It's all sealed in a box, um, which I'm sad and happy about. Sad because I can't look at it, but happy because there won't be any dog hairs on it. I am going to try and keep, uh, my fabric is all stored in plastic containers as well, because I want to keep it as puppy free as I can. What my fiance and I determined was that we're just gonna try and fence off the area where I craft so the puppy can't come near it. And 
that's the best I can do for now because our apartment is, it's a two bedroom, but it, it's not that big that I can just have a whole huge crafting area with a door and lock myself in and let nobody come near the yard. That's just the way it is for now. But yeah, I do have a bit of shop talk for you guys. Um, it's Mother's Day this Sunday. So I was going to try and have my update be on Wednesday or Thursday. Thursday is really pushing it because if you order something for Mother's Day, you, you won't, probably won't get it for Sunday. Um, unless I send it priority, which will up the shipping costs for you guys. I really was going to try and do it on Wednesday, but I work Tuesday and Wednesday. So I'm not sure if I can get the update done in time. But if I can film the tutorial that I want to film today, do all the housework that I have to do today, and get some more sewing done, tomorrow I'll take pictures and I'll just start uploading it little by little. Because I worked, I worked two, yeah, I worked this week, but it's from two o'clock onwards. So I have a little bit of spare time in the morning to give some attention to my Etsy shop. Speaking also of my Etsy shop, um, there's some orders that I do need to send out. I'll be sending them out tomorrow, which is Tuesday. Um, so thank you so much for waiting patiently and I will get those packages ready, like I said, for tomorrow. Right, so things for my shop. At first off, um, I'm really in love with these little wonky notions pouches. Uh, I just love them. This one just says create and the lining is that. And in the back you've got my label. This is a canvas. It's a canvas fabric that I've painted and embroidered on it. And that one's all completely finished so that will be in the update. Um, these are some pouches that I sourced, but they're so well made that I'm just thinking of trying to make my pouches like this from now on, just because I think they look so delicate, so much more delicate than with seams, so we'll see. I've um, painted on these with uh, fabric paint, so it shouldn't come off. I've tested it. It hasn't come off. I've even ironed it. It hasn't come off. So these are the cupcakes. These are missing some zipper pulls that I have to go and buy some head pins to make them with. So I've got three of those. Two are in apricot and this blue called patina. And one of them is in a rose gold and patina. So these won't have a label, but I will sign them with fabric paint paint as well in the back or uh, embroider my name in the back. This I also really love. It's cupcake. This is duck canvas as well. The white zipper. And my favorite. I'm out of this fabric by the way. I love this fabric and this is the last I will be making with this fabric. So it's all 100% cotton. And, you know, they are big enough to, if you want, to use them as project bags. They do fit a skein of yarn in there. So you can probably use them as a sock bag or a one project bag. I have one full calf kidston bag left. It's a drawstring. I haven't put the drawstring in it, but I have cut it. It's just, it's going to be a white ribbon. And this, it's just an upcycled calf kitten tea towel. And the lining is, of course, the queen, because this one had the soldiers with the British flag and the Rolls Royce. 
And these are my leftover Kath Kitston materials. I wanted to make more bags because they've been proved really popular. So this one, uh, it's not completely finished yet. I want to get some B buttons and sew them onto the bag. It's got brown zip, mustard, green lining. It's got a nice handle on it as well. This is also canvas with an upcycled tea towel. This one's my favorite. I don't know what it is about the combination of this pattern and the polka dots, but I love it. And I've left, as you can see here, I've left the Kath Kitston label. I'm not affiliated with Kath Kitston at all. I am not sponsored by Kath Kitston. I just thought it'd be fun if I left the labels. And this is the other one. It's a full-on Kath Kitston. All the front is Kath Kitston. My label in the back. It's got a purple, fun purple zip on it. And the inside of the bag. These are not, these are flat. I don't know why I'm really digging the flat bags. It's just amazing. But they're the standard my standard medium size so you'll be able to fit two skeins in it. Let me show you. Actually two hanks. These are hanks of yarn. So it's a two hank bag. And a project in here as well. Or you could use them as cosmetic bags or linen bags for when you travel and you want to put your dirty clothes inside of them. They've got handles as well. And this one is, I guess, the most decorated one. Um, I've painted and embroidered on this bag, Smell the Roses. This is my handwriting. Sorry about that. And I've painted on them and I've wove, done some woven wheels. Nice, sturdy canvas handle, canvas fabric, green zip. And the hedgehog on the inside. Oh yes, oh yes. And it's a hedgehog essentially smelling a flower. <laughs> so these are um, the little bags I've made for the update. I've still got a couple of notions pouches left. So there's this one and this one. This one's my favorite. And this, I, I die for these bags. These are also my favorite. Um, so these are the, just a Japanese flower print on the outside, um, lining on the inside, and the back is just, these are my large teacups, so you can fit pens, crochet hooks, um, notebooks, little notebooks in there, and this one is, this one is my absolute favorite. If it doesn't sell, I think I'm going to keep it. Because I love it. Right. And the other thing that will be in the shop that mom has made for us are these felted cupcake pin cushions. So these are all 100% wool, made by mom. Not um, cupcake, not the wool. And this one's also 100% wool. This one's a vanilla cupcake with a purple frosting and a cherry on top. So these will also be included in the shop update. Um, that really is it guys. The other thing, like I said, that I had planned inspired by the Invictus poem is that um, I want to do, I think, two more bags like this. Um, but I think I'm going to have them be the sock bag size which is essentially this sock bag size and one of them is and I'm going to embroider some quotes from the Invictus poem onto them and decorate them for you guys. I love all the bags that I've made for every single one of my updates but this bag is going to be very hard 
giving it away. Not giving it away. Um, this bag is going to be really hard to sell because I just, it's one of my favorites. When I made the full cat kits tea towel one, it was also one of my favorites. So, yeah, just a couple things I want that will be in the shop. I really hope to make at least uh, two or three more bags and that will honestly determine the, if the update happens on Wednesday or Thursday. I'm really, really hoping for Wednesday. If worst comes to worst, I will just uh, take pictures of what I've already made and upload that and then just save the other bags for a next shop update. I am going to try to update the shop every two weeks and I am going to try and keep the podcast and the shop updates around the same time so I can show you guys live what I've made and you will just have to guess from pictures. So thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to chat with you about. Oh yeah, in uh, one of the, I think it was episode 42, somebody commented, but I couldn't find the comment to answer about mom's crochet sock pattern. She hasn't released it yet. We're still working out some kinks that we've discovered while testing the pattern and I have to test the pattern again. Hopefully once I test the pattern again, and I get back to mom, that will be it. We really want to get this pattern released uh, for the sock along that Faye is going to be hosting around the September, because we're all just doing a joint sock along. So we want to get that pattern released for the sock along. I'm also going to be making some special bags for that sock along, which I'm really excited about. I know what they're gonna be, and I can't wait for you to see them. So, yeah, that really is it for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Sorry about the long wait. Hopefully the next update won't be three weeks. And thank you so much to everyone who's bought something from my shop or just gone in to see what I offer on my shop. Any views help tremendously. And just keep on crafting, guys. Keep on crafting. I'll see you in two weeks time. Happy crafting!